Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, Hey, happy happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 48 and we are back in the counselor cabin. Yeah, we're back in the home still. It feels good. It feels different. I feel like we were just getting used to recording in New England and now... We're back in New York. Yeah. No, it's good to be back. Yes, for sure. Would you guys believe we have not gone out to eat yet? I'm shocked. I'm so excited because after we record this, so it's Sunday right now, we got back um, Thursday night. So I have promised myself that I was going to eat healthy and eat at home because all I've done was binge drink and eat like shit all summer. And it's time for me to get my summer body um, late in the game. I literally (laughs) on this podcast at least like 15 different times have been like, I am turning a new leaf. I'm going to be a skinny fit queen. Well, you know what? We had fun and that's just what we were doing. And we knew that we were in it and we were just having fun every day. Could have toned it down. But we didn't. Well, that's fine. I didn't mind that we were drinking and having a good time. But this is now that it's back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. And I need to get this body in check. Yeah, me too. There goes gravity right on my body. It's gotten so real. You guys, it's time that I did something I've never done before. I googled gyms near me. Wow. And what um, what revelations did you have? I found some exciting ones. I think I want to join one of those like really cool gyms that has like the turf on the ground and stuff. What? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> turf on the ground you know like the gyms that have the fake grass and people are always like throwing those like cords up and down yeah what's that about oh the rope i've always wanted to throw a rope yeah, around we go like this i yeah. saw miley doing it and she looked crazy i yeah. was like i want to be her it's good for your shoulders i believe yeah probably like your upper arm your lower arm your quads your anus all of it i even scrolled as far down to look at the pictures of the trainers Okay. They're in classes. It was like in, in four different training groups. They were like, and they like described like what each training class you would need. It starts with four. And I thought four was like the intro level of trainers. But that was really for like, if you're training for like a physical event, like a race. And I was like, well, I'm not doing that. And then I realized that as I got down the training list, I'm in training group one, which is for beginners. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to start somewhere. Well, yeah. And I haven't even started yet. I haven't, I didn't make an appointment. All I did was look. But we're going to go tour. I'll go with you. We can go like tomorrow or something. Do don't put it on my calendar because that's going to give me anxiety. I'm going to tell you when I want to go okay. and then we'll figure it out from there. But I, I cannot plan for that until the day I wake <clears> up and I say, this is the day. Jim intimidation, Jim intimidate, Jim, Jim intimidation. Jimmy Cricket is real. Like, I feel like it's hard to go into a gym and be like, everybody's going to stare at me. I don't know what I'm doing, but mostly people are there just to like do their own thing you know well that's why i want to get a trainer and i think when i get the trainer i'm gonna be like listen are you pro gay can i be can i be like sassy around you can i feel comfortable around you i'm gonna see if i can find a woman i always just found i always feel more comfortable in a fem- a female's presence yeah especially in a gym mm-hmm. you know what's even worse than the gym what's worse than the gym us on an edible girls <laughs> We were not well. We have a story for you guys. So during our final week in New England, it was Kira's birthday party. And it was a backyard pool bash, I would call it. A classic backyard shenanigan. One of her family members works at a dispensary. Okay? So this person is is a hired employee. And they sell, which is pretty interesting now if you're into weed culture. You're going to find out soon enough throughout this story tell time that we are not. Um, you can now buy like a Betty Crocker bacon fill brownie. Um, like the mix. The mix, which is pretty incredible because back in our, our younger days, back in young, want, the wonder years, so yeah. we can call them, when you wanted to make a pot brownie, you really had to go through the trenches to get there. You had to make can of butter. You might, did you ever make can of butter? I never made it. I was in the presence of people who were making it. I took a back seat. Yeah, I made I made it once with my friend Amanda. We made carrot cake cupcakes, and they actually like were pretty good. But her house, we did it while her mom was away. And her mom actually might listen to this podcast because we ran into her not that long ago. But the whole house just smelled. Oh, really? Yeah, but they were good. They worked. So how do you make the butter? 
uh, you just kind of like heat it without making it turn brown. I don't, I don't even know if we did this right. This was 2012. Okay? Yeah, and that's that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. That was the time, the Long time process. when we were in high school. You guys, it was, it was. We've already talked about this in the podcast. It was not easy to purchase marijuana. How a lot of people in the comments did remind us that not uh, not every state is as easy as it is in, in other states. Like a lot of places, it's still illegal, and you can't just recreationally be be wreaking havoc in the streets. Yeah, but it wasn't or on our, your couch. It wasn't our campers. It was the it was the greater public who had opinions on us. I don't give a fuck. Okay, guys, I'm speaking from my experience and my little small window of the world. Okay, if you would have come in here with your bullshit and say it doesn't it doesn't apply to you, then bounce off. Okay, because I can't speak for you. I can only speak for myself. <laughs> bounce off. I bounce love off, that. bitch. I'm not fucking doing this. <laughs> Back to the story, you guys. So we're in this backyard pool pool party, and this family member brings over the weed, and they're like, "Oh, like I work at the dispensary, and they sell this like pot brownie mix you can buy, which is like pretty fierce if you're into it." Yeah, I love that. So, but uh, did you notice that on top of the plastic? Plastic, like lid cover it was like an aluminum base and it had that plastic cover they drew like a graph of like the, how the pieces broke down to the yeah it was like a classic grams. like sharpie on top of like an overhead projector expo marker type deal exactly um i do believe it was upside down because i went in to retrieve the piece with kira who I'll, I'll let you continue, but I do believe that the graph was upside down. I don't know if the graph being upside down had anything to do with it. I think it's just our bodies at this point. But what I'm saying about the graph of this on this on this clear screen was that it, it, this was in science. This was up to an illusion that this the the author or the or the baker of the matter developed. I don't know what they were even drawing. They said these little squares. Like, they're like this size square is ten milligrams. This size square is five milligrams. How are we to know? This wasn't an actual pamphlet that came with the mix. This I'm was a simple doodle. I'm also wondering, like, was it not? I didn't get a good look at it. Was it not just one full pan of brownies? Like, how are we going to separate how, what's going on? That's that was the issue here. Yeah. We followed the baker's instructions of how many milligrams in the piece we had and we don't really know long long story short here you guys I, I was drunk and i was feeling sassy and silly like i always do you get three drinks in me and i'm i'm ready to skydive okay like i i lose all inhibitions after a couple canned cocktails mm -hmm. so jonathan goes and grabs us what we think what we know what we don't know to be <laughs> a five milligram Brownie, which at baseline is kind of like the standard gummy amount. Yeah, I can handle that. I can handle two. I can handle a five milligram. No, I can't. So we split the five milligrams. So mathematically, it should be like 2.5 each. Guys, if you didn't know, half of five is always 2.5. Yeah. We do know that. Unless it's a leap year. Yeah. And you know what? Leap year, that's when things get complicated <laughs> in, in the weed community. Um, and so we split the five, we split the five milligram brownie. I'm in the pool. I'm floating around. And I've already eaten a chef's platter of food. Yeah. This was a party. You know me, guys. I'm grabbing a full plate and I'm going back for a second. So all that being said, an hour after I took the edible, I feel a little silly, a little quirky. But it is a little hard to tell. what it is. is it from the canned cocktail? Is it from the sun? And when you're floating in a pool, that's an illusion. An illusion for sure. The pool water can really throw off anyone's body bodily functions. Definitely. Bath water. Yeah, I've already pissed in this pool twice. I'm feeling incredible, okay? <laughs> so the first hour goes by, I feel fine. I uh, What I think that this like silly feeling I have, I, I, I attribute it, or is that what the word? Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I say, oh, it's because of the brownie. I think you're right, though. I think it was just the booze kind of kicking mm -hmm. in. Because when I got out, out of the pool, I, I took a turn for the worst. I started feeling creepy, and I started feeling like I was lacking motor control of my body. I was starting to shut down. So quickly, I told everybody that the edible was hitting me, and I had to leave. And I'm telling this to grown people who are in their 50s and 60s. Yeah. And I, I'm very transparent. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't have a poker face. I'm going to look at you down in the face and said, I took one of those edibles up there. I'm not feeling great. I need to leave. I know when it's time for me to leave. But I feel like that is like kind of the best way to go about it because 100%. then everybody knows because you're not so much in your head of being like, does everybody here know that I'm like feeling it, Mr. Krabs? And that's the real all-encompassing arching point of this story guys it's the thought process what an edible does to i can speak for both of us here that it puts us in our head mm -hmm. i am much more vocal between the two of us about how i'm feeling i think you definitely hold your cards closer to your face than i do i certainly do so you drove us back home and and it's still we were still in the first 10 percent of what was going to hit us for the rest of the evening um we got home and i am now a shell of a human being at this point well i also feel like i wasn't feeling it when i was driving home to be honest like i really wasn't because i wasn't drinking 
and I just wasn't feeling much of anything. I was just tired in the sun and I knew you wanted to go. And honestly, I wanted to go and like grab that leftover lasagna that was in the back and throw it in the microwave. No, we, we didn't have the home. lasagna. We had the leftover hibachi. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. We took the lasagna home from the party is what I'm saying. We've talked about this before, and we'll talk about it again and again and again and again. There's nothing fresher in the restaurant community than hibachi served to you. I did hear that you're not supposed to microwave rice like that, though. Oh, says who? The government? Fuck off. Yeah. Right. I, who who hasn't microwaved rice? And it was great. Yeah, and to be honest, like the things that I have been eating, I'm sure a scientist would be like, you shouldn't be doing that either. Listen, you know how many people hear things on this podcast that aren't true all the time? Yeah. Okay? We're microwaving the rice. We get home, I'm, I'm, I'm literally... Literally, I'm dead on the couch. Jonathan is taking care of me now. He's in full mama bear, mama bear mode, and he's microwaved my hibachi in the, ca- the container. I'm I I shoveled it into my throat. I'm gonna be so honest with you guys. I didn't even chew. Okay, I was eating tiny. I was swallowing mini steak medallions into my <laughs> gullet. Not even no, no. There's no gum. There's no tooth. I'm just <laughs> because the only way to counteract an edible is to cover it, bury it. In food. There was no way it was a 2.5. I'm sorry. We got the baker's dozen on that. We got the baker's dozen. I'm calling it a 13.6. Yeah, that's, I feel in my bones, in my heart of truth. I feel like that's what it was. Because then when we got home, that's when it, I started feeling it. And yeah. And I was like, and it lasted way longer than we thought. I po- I popped on some sex in the city. We needed something to bring us back down to earth. And that was a smart choice. Well, yeah. initially you didn't put on sex in the city. What did I put you on? You put on something very stress inducing for me. And I was such in a shell of a moment that I could not express to you until this exact moment. But you were really in your bar rescue era. Oh yeah. And you put on three episodes. And I, I was like, I am so stoned right now. If I have to listen to John Taffer yell at another small business owner at full volume, I'm going to have a heart attack. Wait, but the episode we were watching was one where oh, it was like- that it, was kind of hard. It was like touching. a veteran. Yeah, it was a, the saddest episode. Yeah. It really, it was a buzz kill for sure, but it didn't kill the the buzz from the brownie, the brownie buzz, if you yeah, will. Yeah, small segue, guys. It was an episode about John Taffer going to save a VFW, which are those rented halls that are for veterans. Do you guys know what VFW stands for? This it's is not kind of, Volkswagen. No, it's not Volkswagen. That's a really big misconception here. And this is going to be something you can share with your fellow friends. that Because I don't think people know. Maybe people do know. Maybe we didn't know. But a VFW stands for veterans of foreign wars yes never knew that i did go i've been to many a party Mm -hmm. at a vfw hall and that was a sad story because there's no one really owning the vfw it's kind of a community ownership program so they really had like just local bar patrons coming in to like help make over the bar we're getting off topic i know and that's okay but were they getting paid i wonder is it voluntary they just go off of tips well they kind of have like a like a board of a committee board I, i believe i was so high babe i was focused laser in on the episode because if i couldn't i was going to lose myself yeah it was existential it was so after we watched three of those and we put on sex and city and and all along what i needed to do guys was just to go to bed but this was kira's birthday party and if you don't know kira she is the biggest bully on the face of the earth that bitch is my best friend till the day i rot i love her more than most people in the entire world okay she is my sister my friend but i told kira i was going to come back out so i had to come back out she is not the kind of person i can tell oh i i'm just gonna stay home tonight no 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 i'm being bullied i'm being told to get over it i'm being told the in quotes, the brownie is winning. You're letting a brownie win. She did say You're that. letting a brownie win. And I was. The brownie was winning. And wait, all of this, sorry, just the setting of this. You and I are home, and everybody else had kind of left the party, showered, got ready, and then went immediately out like the same group to of the people. Bars. Yeah, to the bars for Kira's birthday. So they were they had been out for like a couple of well, hours, and we were in no shape to go out to an outdoor venue with live music to I'm overstimulated no, to begin with. And guys, I am not trying to toot my own horn here. I rarely go any anywhere nowadays where someone doesn't come up to me and says I love your videos which I love so much I love meeting like people that like watch my shit I'm so honored that people like want to come up and talk to me but I refuse to put myself in a public setting when I am literally crumbling from the inside on a a brownie baker's does it and someone wants to come to me and be like hi Zachary so nice to meet you and I'm like Like, I can't do it. Only person in the in the group that took the brownie, though, was Kira. And she had a 10 milligram, but she's built different. And she took it she's before like a we mania. even got there. Yeah, no, she oh, took no, it. she took it, like, as soon as they got there. As That's soon as we got was. here. And I never noticed a character change from her. Yeah. Because she's built different. Because she is. Guys, yeah, but she also, she smokes daily. And it's like, she that's used to the smoke thing. Because I used to smoke like a Canadian fire. I used yes. to be able to handle myself. I could literally stand in front of a class and give a presentation on the fucking planets. On Venus and her sister planet, Serena. Like, I could do it all 
but now like I can't even smoke by myself in my own house with my cat in the room without overthinking like is my cat thinking I'm acting weird like is she on Twitter about this they used to call you wildfire Carson they, I remember they still do and they don't know guys that, that I'm not it's all an act it's all an illusion and that's what it comes down to it's all an illusion I just love to say that um, <laughs> No, I I also agree. So in my younger years, I also was very I was I was I was friends with Mary Jane. We weren't besties, but we were certainly on a first name basis and I had her number. You were okay? a certifiable cannabis consumer. Yeah, me and my ex we used to buy a half an ounce every single week. It was $70, we would split it, and then we would just we'd smoke all single every single week. And I remember every single day I had a day off, right guys? I would wake up late, I would pack a bowl, we'd smoke, we'd watch TV, and then you know what we do next? This mm. is shocking. We would run errands. Yeah. We would go to lunch. I have a cool friend. I was stoned, but I was able to function throughout society. But you know what you know what it is? Miss tolerance. The yes, but also the weed now is too good for us. We used to have half oregano in that bag. And that Mm -hmm. I feel like I can handle. Yeah. I can't handle the dispensary Betty Crocker Baker's dozen. Yeah, I'm okay with the shake. I'm okay with the bottom of the barrel weed. I don't need this high test gorilla glue bullshit. Purple haze my fucking ass okay <laughs> it's too much for me and that's why i no longer partake and there all there will be other campers out here who can speak to this too when you're younger you party you party you party you do what you got to do to survive okay and now that i'm a little bit older i'm a little bit wiser i have a couple gray hairs i know my limits and i haven't smoked in years i haven't taken an edible in years and this was a lap a, a lapse of a lapse of judgment okay? okay i was in a pool you cannot hold me to anything i say while i'm underwater okay i'm a different person then And someone should have stepped in and said, Zach, I know you. This isn't you. And that should have been me. But instead, I was like, ooh, we're getting crazy. Let's do it. Well, you did it with me. Yeah, but I was also like, I I wasn't really drinking. So I wasn't feeling the effects of anything. So I think when you're drunk and you make a decision like that, to you, it's like, oh, my God, this is going to be fun for now. You don't think about how it's going to affect you 9 p.m. at night while you're shoveling hibachi down your gullet. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I love to operate at 100 I am my sharpest at 100. I like to be present. I like to be just fun and funny. And I cannot be myself when I'm under the influence of marijuana. I cannot. I feel like I'm overthinking. I can't catch up to the conversation. And I'm just shutting down. I walk to the bathroom after swallowing an entire portion of hibachi with my shoulders up and like like creepily stepping like a senior citizen. You look like Willy Wonka. It took over my body, Oompa Loompa style. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I just, I love weed culture. I support it. I think it does wonders for people who need it, right? Absolutely. We're in support support of it let's get let that be known oh my god i'm so in support of it but do not look at me when i tell you this story and say you just haven't found your your strain that's what i want to avoid here no no no. there is no strain for me i am not that bitch okay so don't come in the comments being like oh well you really should just figure out what we're i don't need it i don't need it i like to operate on uppers i am not a downer okay i just don't need the anxiety okay it sends me into a spiral and i don't like it before we move on let me ask you this did you ever did you have like an experience that kind of fully turned you off from smoking one Kira was there as well. I, I I always remember this story. One time I was when I was living with my ex, Kira came over. We smoked like out of a bong and I ripped it so hard. And it got me so stoned that the entire conversation, my ex and Kira were speaking, and I was could I physically remember I could not open my mouth. Like I like was I felt like it was like completely overtaken. They talked for four or five minutes. I literally like was like, ha ha ha. Ah, it was so awful. And I remember like she left after that or whatever. And like the minute she left, I like sobbed in my ex's arms being like, I couldn't put the pieces together. I felt like I was like so delayed. And it was like, I thought, I remember like calling her the next day, apologizing, being like, please don't not be my friend anymore. Cause I was so weird that night. And she was like, chill the fuck out. Like I didn't even like care. I knew you were a stone, but I didn't think that having to, but I remember being like, I can't like, catch up oh my god it was awful that yeah that was like my early 20s i i really genuinely since the pandemic have not really smoked at all that was my first times like even having an edible like since then yeah what about you i i don't know if i talked about on this podcast or not i feel like i may have but i was way 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 too high and 
um, my roommate's boyfriend put on this. It was either a Vice video or like a music video where they launched a slice of pizza into outer space. I wrote it down. It's called Endless Fantasy Pizza Launch. There's a two hour version you can watch online. And they put a slice of pizza on like a glass board and attached a GoPro to it. And I don't I don't know how they sent it up in space. I watched it today and it like gave me PTSD. I don't know what it was, but that pizza went up so high and I saw the horizon line and I was like, I couldn't handle it. Was yeah. like I was, I was like downloading how small I was and how like nothing really matters and instead of making me feel good it it was like my life flashed before my eyes and everybody we were in a group setting and everybody else was like oh this is so cool like this is so funny and random pizza in outer space and I'm having an internal crisis and I can't tell anybody about it because I don't want to be buzzkill but yeah that was bad that's so intense yeah too. I also think that's a little too, like that, that okay so pizza over the horizon line space John Taffer screaming screaming at small business owners these are things I do not want to watch on mm -hmm. an edible it's too stress inducing yeah maybe like a live stream of like the penguins at the San, San Francisco Zoo I could probably handle that I don't want to watch anything I don't want to take the edible okay guys I don't mind take an edible in front of me be fine I'll crack open a, a can of beer okay? yeah I'm a simple American man. I want barbecue ribs, a cold Bud Light, my Daisy Dukes, and my man on my arm. And that's where I'm happiest. Amen. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements, campers. Morning announcements. Before we get into it, we have some housekeeping slash just notes to, to make. An announcement. Yeah, an announcement, if you will. Yeah, a bulletin. A bulletin board of information. What's the bulletin, Counselor John? So, a lot of you had messaged us. So many of you messaged us, and thank you for letting us know. That Georgia Hardstark on My Favorite Murder had mentioned us by name, by podcast name, and not only that, but recommended us. I know. So if you're listening to this podcast and you came over from the My Favorite Murder family over there, thank you so much for joining in. The Murderinos. The, what are they called? The Murderinos. The Murderinos. Welcome to Camp Counselors. We love you here at Camp Shady Birch. What an absolute honor. And I kind of just want to say, uh, so My Favorite Murder was the very first podcast I ever listened to. And MFM is the reason that I started my first podcast. I had one before that started in 2017 because of her and Karen. And it's just like so full circle and crazy. And I, I messaged her that too. I was like, it's just so crazy. Because I'm sure people say that all the time. They're like, you were the reason I started X, Y, and Z. But I'm like, no, literally, like I, I wasn't familiar with what a podcast was until I stumbled upon in 2017. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was just kind of full circle and so crazy to hear her say that it sounds like we're like her, she's a friend like listening to other friends talk because that's how I felt since 2017 listening to my favorite murder it's so cuckoo bananas I know you were like bugging out because you literally love their podcast so much and you love her so much and it, it, it was just like such a crazy moment so I messaged her because mm -hmm. she followed me and I was like hi Georgia thank you so much for your kind words on today's episode of my favorite murder Jonathan has been a huge fan of your podcast for years and has put me onto your show since then my favorite murder has been a part of so many road trips flights morning coffee runs etc we are so happy you love our show. It means a lot. Thank you for all that you do and advocate for sending all the love your way. And then she responded back. She said, yay, you two are so funny. I didn't realize you were a couple and that makes me so happy. Hooray for love and for podcasts. Yes, love is love. Well, there's like, there's so many levels to the community here and there's so many different avenues, but regardless of where you stand, My Favorite Murder is like a beast in the industry. They've paved the way for so many other true crime podcasts and just the respect of the podcasting world as a whole. And I remember like we, even like our first ever road trip to like um, Tennessee together, we listened to them for hours. When I was driving, I was on my way driving to you one time when um, Georgia's cat Elvis, she told the news that Elvis passed away. This was like maybe a year, maybe two years ago. And I was like sobbing in the car. I was like, oh, I've so never sorry. met this cat. I've never met this woman. I'm like, why am I so attached to this cat that she still like has him meow at the end of the episodes? But I don't, it was just full. It's very cool. I know. It's just, it's great to be validated by people in our community that do what we do but it's even better to be validated by you guys 
on our reviews. I love reading them, guys. So I know I just like really like love our campers so much because you get the funniest reviews ever, the funniest YouTube comments. When we meet you in real life, we met so many like campers this summer. Yeah, I love. Some of them so came up campers. and was just like, "Hey, it's me from Cabin 69." I was like, "Bitch, like what like, an introduction." We have the sweetest and most amazing community, and we we're gonna always welcome it to more campers here. But if you're here right now, we love you and thanks for being a part of it. Okay, yes. love you, love you, love you. We are so appreciative. Okay. Moving on to enough morning announcements. Of, enough of the mushy shit. No, I, we're always going to be mushy. I can't help this is morning announcements, you guys. This is the part of the show we share articles that we found this week that we want to tell you about because you may have missed them because they're really not that like interesting for the global population, but for our weird camp community, like we love them and we want you to know about them. Okay, yeah, it's like fun, sometimes uplifting, just usually weird, creepy, news. soupy, Spooky, soupy. Yeah, like yeah. inconsistent, and they like definitely need to be like. Babe, one thing fixed. about one thing about us, we are soupy and inconsistent. Yeah, and that's okay. Okay, we mirror the food that's served in our mess hall <laughs> anyways jonathan do you want to start off with your yes story yes i am um it's from click to houston.com i am not going to read the name of the uh, the title of this article until i am complete okay I until it. i come to full completion oh okay so <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> there is this woman in silsby texas and her name is Peggy Jones, and she's just minding her own business, tending to her garden. I'm assuming she has a topsy-turvy plucking those ripe, ripe tomatoes. You remember topsy-turvy? Oh, my God. What an incredible infomercial those were. Guys, that was the t those are the tomato plants that grew upside down. Upside down. Now, what makes them so juicy and delicious from growing upside down? A question that I could simply Google, but I never will. Anyway, so Peggy Jones, she's she's fixing her topsy-turvy. And in gardening, you know, there's not... <laughs> Why did I just sound Canadian? In gardening gardening you know there's not many dangers you got to look out for gardener snakes you know that's kind of the least of your worries wasps nest pests and yeah. control babe even if they can't bite you they can ruin your crops right right of course but it's like overarching doesn't feel as though you're in eminent danger when you're doing your hobby and oh. tending to your to your crops well side note here my father was attacked by a groundhog in his garden that's so terrifying you what? never know what could happen in nature and that thank you great segue because this woman peggy peggy say <laughs> say her name peggy peggy a snake falls from the sky an absolute nightmare an for actual us. snake falls from the actual sky and it wraps itself around her arm it wasn't like a boa constrictor but the way she was describing it was like boa constrictor-esque and that's not the worst part a hawk nose dives out of the sky and goes full-on hitchcock on her ass and starts pecking her and attacking her it was a snake biting her the snake okay wait hold on so they showed pictures in this article and they <laughs> were pretty gory so i'm not going to be putting them on youtube i'm not going to be putting them anywhere if you want to look it up you can look it up i will put a picture of peggy up because she is a survivor of this poor miss pj she's screaming help me jesus help me waving her hands in the air the hawk flies off with the snake her husband takes her to the emergency room and they find on her glasses there was venom from the snake. She had not been bit by the snake, but at some part when it either fell on her head, I'm not exactly sure, but there was venom from the snake on her glasses. That could have went into her eyeball. I know. This is giving revelations. Snakes from the skies, birds attacking. Yeah. So what we can only assume happened, because uh, no one actually saw it, what we can assume happened was the hawk had its little snake snack in its hand, maybe was texting in the other claw, wasn't paying attention, mm, dropped it. Yeah. The snake falls from the sky out of its clutches onto pj she starts getting attacked by the hawk who just wants its lunch but it was crazy guys just don't the text and scary. fly please seriously and maybe maybe don't garden either it's dangerous you never know what could happen out there the one thing you're never going to assume is that a snake is going to hit you from above that's the one thing you can almost like guarantee you in life and now you can't you know what I mean? literally you cannot guarantee like snakes it. don't just fall from the sky bitch this one did okay I Bitch, think we, this one did. Guys, prayers for Peggy. Yes. Prayers for Peggy. I'm getting real church with her right now because she's got to be shaken up, shook to her core. All this for a topsy-turvy tomato? It was probably delicious. It better have been. Now, before, I'm just going to wrap it up. So, um, people have said to her, she's like, oh my God, you're the unluckiest person alive. You got 
attacked by a snake from the sky and then a hawk. And she said, I feel the opposite. I feel like I'm the luckiest person alive to have survived this. And then the article went on and said, this wasn't even her first encounter with a snake. Peggy Jones survived getting bitten by a venomous snake a few years back. And then it ends. I was like, oh, hold on. That's not how you're supposed to end a story. I want to follow up on that. Like, what's, what happened with that? Yeah, it's not giving luck. It's giving unluck. But it's giving unluck. She's a glass half full kind of girl. And I have to appreciate a woman like that. Yeah. I always do. And so the title of this article was Help Me Jesus. Snake falls out of sky, lands on woman, then both attacked by hawk. In solidarity, Peggy, you guys, we are going to offer her two free pool vouchers at the Camp Shady Birch Pool. Unfortunately, yeah. the pool has been closed since the 70s, but she is free to do whatever she wants in that big old ditch. <laughs> so, Peggy, please reach out to our legal team and our promotional team, both being Sandwich, and he will set you up with some sort of coupon. Medallion, maybe. Ooh, why aren't we giving out more medallions? I think we need to. A doubloon. A doubloon, if you will. Okay, so what's your story? I love that story. Thank you for sharing that. You're so welcome. Um, very similar story here. A funeral home in El Salvador is offering pink coffins with Barbie lining. Okay. Yes, come on, Barbie girl. The pink metal coffins are on sale at Alpha and Omega Funeral Homes in the city of um, Ahua Chapan, which is near the border of Guatemala. Okay, familiar. Yep. Yeah, they've already sold 10. <laughs> okay. Which is super fantastic. But for those of you that don't know, it doesn't mean 10 people have already passed. It just means that 10 people have already planned ahead. Yeah. Which I love a girl who knows what she wants and she's willing to take that burden off of her, her family. It's like, yeah. I'm good. I got this. I know I want it. I'm going to get the package set up, get on the payment plan. You know hey, I mean? lay away. I was just going to say. Is it on a firm? Is it on, what are the other ones called? I don't know what you're talking about. Those like, you can break up the payments. Oh, I don't know. What's that other one called? It's so famous. Ra Rakuten? No, I'm not sure. But she's got the payment plan set up and she's ready to go. And there's 10 of them so far. But they're still available, guys. So if you are a local to El Salvador and you're looking to go down in style, may I suggest <laughs> these pink Barbie coffins? I'm going to visually describe them for you guys. Okay, please. They're metal. Go off. They're hot pink. The inside is giving some sort of um, white sateen satin lining. And at the top of the lid is these two um, pictures of Barbie. And Oh, so Barbie's going down with you. Yeah, so Barbie's going. Barbie Barbie is in attendance. Um, Barbie is giving um, Princess Barbie. Mm -hmm. So I have an idea. I think it would be lovely if those inserts of the Barbie could be changed out for a Barbie that matches your career. So if you're a pilot, let's get Pilot Barbie. Where's Podcast Barbie? Where's Dr. Barbie? Yeah. These Barbies should be interchangeable with the career that you pursued. That's lovely. I really like that idea. I think that's a great idea. Barbie's dream hearse. Barbie's dream hearse. Barbie's dr dream um, casket. Like, yeah. Barbie can have it all. Barbie has not stopped collabing this year. Dead ass. She is so busy doing corporate America. From start to finish, from diapers to death. Listen, we loved the Barbie movie, guys. The Barbie movie is making a billion dollars. Barbie has got feminine energy. She is the feminist leader of the new world. We are obsessed. Barbie has done, like, so many collabs. Have you seen any collabs that you, like, really enjoyed this year? Uh, I saw the MeUndies one. I, I thought I was going to buy us a pair. Ooh, I... That's... I Wow. Okay. What were they? Just Barbie heads on, on the Pichka deal? No. They were, like... They had, like, a Barbie design that was, like, throughout. So it's, like, they have a stretchy fabric that they make their, like, leggings out of. They have joggers. It's, like, lifestyle. Oh, it's lifestyle. Yeah, it's joggers. lifestyle joggers. I think they even have, like, shirts now. And it's all kind of, like, skims that it's, like, made out of the same material. But it's just, like, a certain pattern pattern that they have on it so you can get some briefs i was looking at the joggers i was gonna get us some barbie joggers i will tell you my two favorite collabs i've seen through barbie go off the rollerblades you can buy that like it's like a big rollerblade brand that has them that look just like the ones from the movie i couldn't name a single rollerblade rollerblade brand yeah well there's one brand. uh my number one though is definitely the base luggage the barbie luggage that base with shay mitchell's brand base did i missed that they're it's just hot pink luggage for me it feels less like barbie-esque and more just like a hot pink luggage that was like barbie brand Branded, but like there's no like barbie on it and that's kind of like great that's like hot okay if that luggage is coming out through the airport on that little conveyor belt there's no doubt in there in your mind that it's yours i'm not missing it babe it's hot pink it's my barbie luggage i don't think about my problems with my luggage until we are waiting for our bags and i'm like i wish i had something more recognizable i know so i have a base bag already and mine has a nude handle but it is a black like hard like case if you're ever in the market for guys for new 
new luggage, may I suggest the base luggage? It was gifted to me two years ago. I have no affiliation with Shay Mitchell, you guys, but I am obsessed with their luggage. And the handle, you remember those mouse pads that had like the wrist? The what was, yep. It was a wrist rest. A and wrist it was, support. It was like squishy. It felt like what I thought that a boob would feel like when I was a kid. That was the closest thing that these two gay men ever felt to a boob was an it was a, a mouse wrist rest. False. You drive and you're going 80 miles per hour. You put your hand out the window and you go like this. You cup it. You Feels always like a boob. say that. Feels I like a boob. I don't think that is true. That is not. That doesn't make any sense. Irregardless, that that padding that they had is what Shay Mitchell has on her base bags for where your yeah. hand is resting. Yeah, it is. So com- ultimate, ultimate, ulti- maximize comfort. You will never <laughs> get a carpal tunnel with a base bag. And that we cannot actually guarantee. Well, I can guarantee, okay? If legal matters come into hand, I have a legal team. Sandwiches behind the camera. <laughs> so this is a couple things I want to talk about. What do you think are some Barbie clubs that we want, we want that we didn't get that are just weird? Oscar Mayer. It's already pink. Barbie baloney. Barbie baloney at Oscar Mayer. B A R B I. I tried to do the Oscar yeah, Mayer. I'm sorry. Hard. I was a couple hours off. I want a full Barbie collab with McDonald's. Very a la pretty Patty from SpongeBob. Oh, I want nice. pink top to bottom on my burger, bitch. I want a pink bun. I want a pink meat. I want a pink tomato and a pink sauce. Give me the pink, pink, pink. Seriously. Like they had the <laughs> they had that black bun for someone at Burger King. <gasps> that made everybody's poop green. Yeah, which is really funny how the color wheel works. Yeah, the color wheel of it all. The color wheel of it all. Um, no, so I like that. I also think the Barbie should do a collab with the DMV. I want a Barbie license. <laughs> that would be cute. How and it hot? Sparkles. You can pay more for some sort of like weird state like license plate to have like a little otter on it or a lighthouse or whatever you bitches ass want. But I can't get a pink license. What's the one with the rainbow? Is that Hawaii? Yeah, that one's fierce. Those are so clutch. Those are so pretty. I love the New York classic yellow and black license plate. Yeah. I think that's hot. Masters is like boring. It's like red and white. And now you can't even get like customized plates anymore. I don't Says think they're where? doing it. Yes, you can. I, no, I think that they're like limiting what people can do on a license plate. You can't say that out loud if you don't know it's true, babe. I know but someone you, that just got one in Massachusetts. You just made a claim about carpal tunnel that is not completely true. Well, I'm here to tell campers, let us know in, the, in your in your state because I know someone that just recently got a Cape Cod Massachusetts license plate. What does plate. it say, ass? It's got a lighthouse on it, motherfucker, okay? No, and you I'm you can't ta- get it unless you live in that area. I'm talking. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the lettering, like what it says. Oh, and like you know LGBT, what? LGBT, big fat cock. I, you, I don't know. I don't know what you can get. On that's that. what I was talking about. Not, not what you were talking about. And also, we weren't even talking about license plates. We were talking about. Are we talking about DMV like licenses? I was like talking ID? about the physical ID, your license, yeah. driver's license. Okay. I want my license. Can I tell you what I have my license say? Come on, Olivia Rodrigo. No, we're switching topics. I'm not saying my license. I want a hot pink license, the Barbie collab at the DMV. But for my actual physical license plate, I want it to say MZ, Ms. G-U-R-L-1. Ms. Girl 1. Ms. Girl 1. Because I, I, want- I can't be Princess Girl, but I can not be Ms. Girl. Oh, Princess Girl. Maybe I would have Princess Girl on mine. That would be nice. Or maybe like... C U M S L T. I don't know. Oh, Just see, that's not going to be allowed. Just brainstorming. Do you have any other ideas that you want? Where a weird Barbie collab? Um, I, it, going with the camping themes, because in the Barbie <gasps> movie they had that camper scene in between. Yep. When they were doing so it, so cute, so cute. So I would love like a, a Barbie caravan or like a Barbie tent, even a little like one of these. I'm sure Thermos has a. You can get a Barbie Thermos. That's for sure. Maybe I'll look into that. I was being creepy, but I think that's actually a really smart idea. Yeah, I would. Uh, Pink? Well, can bears see color? Can a bear see if I have a hot pink? Like, is there a downfall to having a hot pink tent in the middle of the woods? You can't tell me a bear is going to look at a hot pink campsite and be like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. Like, obviously the bear is going to want to come over. Okay, so maybe that's not a good idea then. I don't want to lure a bear in. It doesn't matter who you are, you're attracted to the pink aura of it all. Even the goth girls. I saw some goth girls who say they they hate pink and they're like, Barbie, pink, out my pussy we love it you guys so let us know if you have any connections with the state the state or the government to get me a pink driver's license i'd really appreciate that and this episode is dedicated to peggy because peggy has been a survivor of it all we Mm. love you peg grab your bug juice and bear spray campers it's time to pack it up and take a hike
Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little. We're going to do some complaining, as if we haven't done that already this episode. And we're just going to tell something to take a hike. I'm going to go ahead and go first. Okay, let's hear it. I love how I'm always like, mm, I think I'm going to go first. It but just it's like, makes sense for the flow of the show. No one's upset about it. Babe, the flow of the show. Listen, my flow is like a river. The River Lee. Oh, I love that song by Adele. The River Lee. I'm sorry. Adele this heads isn't will, camp song. Adele heads will get it. Yeah, you're going to have to what save that your, for a different segment. What please. is your take a hike, bitch? So my take a hike is when people don't give me enough hot sauces or condiments at the drive-thru. This is so true, guys. Jonathan, get rip it in, rip it in, because you feel passionate about this. So we're leaving Beyonce's Renaissance World Tour. We'll get back to that later. And you're driving for like an hour, and I'm on a high. We're both like feeling great. We're like loving life. It was amazing. Everything's great. I didn't think anything could bring me down. The post-concert high. Everyone knows it. Yeah. We pull off to Taco Bell. I'm hungry. We're both hungry. So we put in our orders. Cheesy Fiesta Potato two cheese roll-ups, and a dollar menu rice and bean burrito. I was simple that night. All I got was just a little a little beef supreme burrito. Okay. I was so bad, guys. I was being so bad. You were being so bashful, and then you, like, watched me go at my food. And I like, was fine mm. at that point, though, but I had more food at the... Uh, at the. We'll talk about that later. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, at, the, at the show. Okay. So, we're at the drive-thru. We put our order in, and I'm like, sometimes, you know, I just want to let them know when we're ordering to, that I want hot sauces, because I know they're going to ask. I'm going to be like, just throw the hot sauces in the bags. Thank you so much. Much. So we get to the window. The order like seems to be right. And you check the bag. I'm like, check the bag. How many hot sauces did they give us? Because one thing about me, I am going bite for sauce. Like I am putting my sauce on top of my bag pre-pandemic. I would rip up in my little hot sauce. I would take a bite of my food and I would suck the sauce out of the bag. And I would have two sucks per bag. You're still doing that now. You stopped for a little bit, but I saw you do that recently. So don't don't lie to them and say that you don't do that anymore. You still do that. Uh, well, if I'm drunk and I'm just out of it, that's fine. But I don't like to think about how many people's fingers are stocking things. Well, you know it's what I good mean? for the body. It's good to get the natural bacteria in there so you can fight off other germs. Okay. Well... I'm, Whatever. you know, again, so two bites per sauce packet is kind of what my quota is, how, right? This is too difficult for us to understand, okay? Can you please let us know how many sauce packets per item of food? That's going to be a lot easier for us to understand. That's too much math because we got all together, we got like, what, five items, six items between the, you and I? And we didn't say who the hot sauce was for. Oh, wait, you love, let's just be frank here. You love a quesarito. I love a quesarito. How many hot sauces per one quesarito? That's going to be a lot oh, easier for everyone to understand here. Um, Probably like... Four. No, that is for one. True. Honestly, that is so true of you. It's it's, and I don't blame you. But you, you're, you're bite size. They know you're a saucy girl. Yeah, and and I had asked for sauce. It doesn't cost anything. How it many sauces free. did they give you? Between the two of us, four sauces. I thought there was three. Four sauces. Wow. So then I'm like, okay, can we, girl? Can we get more hot sauce? Is what I had you ask because you were I, the driver. I so. asked. I said, "Can we have some more hot sauce?" It was that sounded a lot more sassier than I said. I did not say sassy at all. Yeah, you know, you weren't. You weren't. Yeah. So l let it be known. Let that be you. You're correct. You're, I'm getting sassy. You're embellishing. I'm fired up. You're an embellisher. I'm an embellisher. Hey, I sue can't us. Help it. Sue us. But let the records show on file. Facts on file. Mm -hmm. I asked. Excuse me, miss. You look lovely in this beautiful neon light. May I have a little bit more sauce? Check the Carfax. That's correct. But I'm being fiery like the fire sauce that I needed more of. Fuck the Diablo sauce. Anyway, so you ask that and she looks at you like you just were trying to rob the till. Like I killed her puppy. Okay, like, bitch, bitch. Fuck off. Don't worry about the cash wrap. Worry about the crunch wrap. What am I putting on this? Like I'm not <laughs> taking money from you. Can we get some? And she she goes. <sighs> no, she she sighed. Wait, let me. Okay. She, she goes. <sighs> Um, Close your eyes. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. G what? That's fine, I guess. I'm not asking for anything crazy. I'm asking for a good amount of hot sauce so I can enjoy my meal, which they did the, They did not mess up. Uh, they did not miss a beat. Five items in the bag, four sauces. We asked for more sauce and that's an issue all of a sudden as if it's coming out of your paycheck, bitch. And she didn't bounce. even, she didn't, yeah, bounce off. That's the new thing. Bounce off, it bitch. Just, for me, it's just bounce. Bounce. Bounce, bitch. I'm not fucking doing this right now. And she didn't even know that you were going to be kind enough to give me all of the hot sauces because you didn't need any. You're not really a Taco Bell hot sauce kind of girl. Incorrect. If I'm getting my classic chalupa, I want two 
two packets per chalupa. I know myself, okay? But with a burrito, I just, it's, too, I'm not like, how? You have your own way. You'll pour on each bite. I'm not like that, okay? But for this, I didn't even need the sauce. But also think about the things that I bought. Two cheese roll-ups, very bland. You get the sauce. It's the rescuer from Down Under. Yeah. Same with the, the only thing I don't put it on is the cheesy Fiesta potatoes, which <gasps> that's riddle me this. That, that's delicious on the cheese. I'm going to double down on it. Take a hike. If you go to a combo Taco Bell KFC and I order the cheesy Fiesta potatoes and I'm expecting those delicious delicious little morsels from Taco Bell and you give me potato wedges from KFC. Yeah, but this is old news babe, because they don't have the wedges anymore. They switched to the fries and the fries are delicious. Well, they thank God those wedges were the devil's work. Fuck that. I am never Bounce. a fan of a wedge. No, me neither. Unless it is a classic cork wedge and I'm wearing my gingham top. Yes, we love a cork wedge here at Camp J.D. Birch. All right, now that I'm out of breath and I just told that, that was like, I feel no, better. I'm not done with it. I'm not done with it yet. Okay, go ahead. Wait, I, I'm sorry to the fast food, Mer fast food workers of America. Okay, you you are frontline workers through and through. You are yeah. feeding the masses. But I don't need the pushback when I ask for more sauce. And if it's some sort of financing issue, let me know. I will gladly pay the 10 cents, 5 cents, 50 cents. I don't give a fuck. And okay? that's, that's the I thing. just want my sauce. That's the thing. Because I know, is it Chick-fil-A? I don't really go to Chick-fil-A. Certain is it McDonald's will depending, charge you. Depending on who owes the franchisee, the owner... Of these seven, the follower of a, the follower of a McDonald's would always charge for the sauce. So okay, like, grow up. Bitch. Annoying as hell. Corporate should not let that go. However, if that's the issue, I will pay for it. That's yeah. fine. I just want what I want, and I want my sauces. I need one sauce per two bites. Like this, it's my quota, and I have to fill it. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. How many sauces did you end up with at the end of this ordeal? Still not enough. She gave maybe like three or four more, but Guys, I was like, at that point, we just had to drive off. The real issue to. was here was the, was it was the, the sheer. Re action on this worker's face it was the gasp sigh eyes closed i guess i can bitch yes you fucking can put your little wrist in the bag and grab me some more now okay? and i was being like nasty when she closed the window too we were still sitting there you're being and nasty. I, you're, not, you're never nasty I, yeah but i looked at you i was like fine yeah i know it's fine of course it's fine yeah yeah and we're really we're we we were not rude to her no we no no, no no we really yeah, just beefing we were not story yeah, we're here just, we're like just, a beefy crunch layer supreme of course we have to we have to add the beef to the burrito um um, but yeah, it was just, it was a time and it was annoying and we just, we needed our sauce and we needed it now. And I will say the food was fresh and the food was delicious. It was. I would go back. I always do. I always return to a local Taco Bell. Yeah. Okay. Before you say what you take a hike as, I'm just realizing now that behind you on the wreath, there's like a little strand of your hair from when you, when you wore that wig from Kath and Keem. Oh. A it's little, nice. A little it's unusual. Relic, a little relic of the history of the show. It's nice. It's unusual. Look, everybody. Ew. How fun. <laughs> Huge. Anyways, my take a hike now. Yes, go ahead. It actually goes hand in hand with Taco Bell. This has everything to do without using with, with using a public restroom. Mm. That typically happens after eating Taco Bell. My take a hike this week is knocking on the bathroom and I'm fucking inside of it, and you know it, bitch. That is my take a hike. If you knock at the door and you jiggle the door handle and someone's inside, why the fuck are you still knocking? It's not closed for a reason. Someone's in there fighting for their goddamn life. Okay? <laughs> you know someone's in there. Stop knocking. I'll tell you the story of this week. We were at a lovely local watering hole in New Bedford, Massachusetts. So we want to name drop or no? What is it called? I don't even remember when this happened. This was at the bar that had the lovely blue le blueberry lemonade. Uh, Cultivator Shoal. Oh, we yeah, were we were at, at Colt. We were at Cultivator in downtown New Bedford back when we were home, and I had a, a blueberry vodka lemonade. And girls, if you're ever out there and you're looking for something that's a little more fun, or you're on the sweeter side, something refreshing, never count out a blueberry vodka lemonade. Are you in your Kettle One phase? Um, I've uh, I've never left, okay? I, it this is wasn't, so 90s. This it's wasn't so Kettle cute. One. This wasn't Kettle One. Yeah, anything but a Tito's. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just like over saying Tito's, so I've been saying Kettle One, because Kettle One was the vodka of the 90s and the early 2000s before, before Tito's really took over the market. And when some Somebody young orders it, they're always like a gasp a little. It's like they're set back. It's like Kettle One, not a Tito's. Kettle One is a is a gorgeous vodka brand that has a great, a great vodka. Um, I love Stoli Blue. That's my favorite blueberry vodka, but they didn't have it. They had like a local brand there. Anyways, I'm getting off track here. Mm -hmm. I was consuming my lovely blueberry vodka lemonade, and all of a sudden I felt uh, my insides doing the Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. They're twisting on the high rise, the high rope. It's it's insane. I I had to use the restroom, and I felt safe in this place because there is two restrooms, there are single stalls, and they're big. So I'm in there and I'm I'm working through my trauma, okay? This 
is my therapy and the toilet is my therapist. Yeah. And I'm pissing and I'm pooping and I'm doing my I'm doing my thing. Guys, this is an open space. I'm gonna talk about it. Okay. Don't be don't be off put by this. Just accept me for who I am. Right. So it's a onesies. We're not talking about a bathroom stall. We're talking about like a the cheese stands alone. The cheese stands alone and it's floating uh, a water level that mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about. Okay. So I'm going to the bathroom and I hear a knock at the door and I didn't say anything because the immediate response after the knock at the door was to grab the handle. And I like that because when the handle is locked, it is it's 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 a co- the common denominator is that someone's inside you would assume someone is using the restroom 30 seconds later another knock a minute later a three knock and then a a very aggressive hand jiggle of the door to that point i say i'm in here why do people need the audible confirmation that i am in here why else would the fucking restroom be locked I, we heard it in the restaurant. Don't come up with some sort of lie narrative. I know what I was doing in there, and there was no noise. There was no noise in there. No, we heard you yelling, I'm in here. Oh, really? Yeah. You're a liar. The entire restaurant got quiet. Oh, no. Well, no, as kidding, it should be. Um, no, so I then rushed along, which I was not finished. I know my body. Yeah. I did what I had to do, which was called an emergency exit. I said, at this point, I can stop. If I need to revisit in 10, I'll be back. But right now, I can leave. I exit the restroom, and there's these three girls who are any taller than five foot, all in a circle around a mirror looking at themselves. And I just couldn't believe it. The audacity of the younger generation, the Gen Z of it all, <laughs> to do this to me. And I should, you know what I should have done? I should have waited after them again and I should have started banging at the fucking door on them. It was stressful for me. You should have not flushed. No, I, oh, I can't do that. That's, then I look like an animal. I just think it's rude. I don't think it's, I think it's uncouth. Yeah, it's bikuf, bikuf. Yeah, it's it's below me. I would never do it to anybody because as someone who is an IBS survivor, yeah, I know that sometimes things can get tricky, sticky and messy. And you got to let people work through their trauma. And I was trying to work through mine, but I was rudely interrupted by three young women who I wanted to card. I should have carded them because I think they had fakes. Yeah. They were young and they couldn't even make eye contact with me. Well, they, after- looked, they looked away. No, look at me in the goddamn eyes because you embarrassed me. And the least you can do is look at me and say, hi, meet your maker. Remember when we went to that one party and you opened the bathroom door and the worker was in there? Yeah. Oh, my God. Lock the, the door. The problem with me is I'm always in the bathroom. But it's also you can't knock. And sometimes if you can't hear anything like the lock, you're right. The lock on the door handle should be the telltale sign that someone's in there. Because sometimes I can't tell if I heard something. I'm like, did I hear something? Was that in the back? Is my pager going off? And sometimes I don't want to say something. So I want the door to speak for itself. Yeah. I just feel like if the door is locked, you know, someone's in there. Mm-hmm. Take a beat. Relax. You're not going to get in there any faster than you're supposed to be in there, okay? Exactly. Take a beat, take a seat, take a hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle kitchen. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. Changing tracks here a little bit. This is the time to celebrate who's doing the damn thing. Who's really got it under control? Who's worthy of our stamp of approval here at Camp Shady Birch? Spread a little love in your heart. What's that from? Cheerios. Oh, it is. Or something like that. Listen, if you're having heart problems or cholesterol, just get some Cheerios. When I hear high cholesterol, I am going to the Cheerio aisle. I'm going to the cereal aisle and I'm grabbing my box of Honey Nut. Do you remember when the doctor told me my cholesterol was getting a little high and then we were in the cereal aisle and you were making fun of me and you're like, you want some Cheerios? You want me to put some Cheerios in the car? And I literally looked at you and said, this is my life. This is my body. This is medical. And I don't appreciate you making a joke out of it. And then you felt bad. I'm going to say. Say it. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take away from the the experience that you had. No, you're not gonna take away from my medical history. That's not what my I'm. My medical life. This yeah. is my life that you're making a joke. So when we were in the aisle, it did say lowers cholesterol, and in a you knew stri- what you were doing. In a straight up non joking way, oh. I said, "Do you want to get Cheerios to help with your cholesterol?" And you. Did not like that. I said, okay, noted. I did not, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Maybe that's something you would do. Let's not fight in the beginning of Camper Crush. Yeah, let's spread some love at Camper Crush, okay? Spread a little love in your heart. Yeah, how did we get there? Oh my I God, lo- that was hey. a slippery slope. That, typical of the show. What Cheerios you- will destroy a family. What do you love in this week, baby? Bring a nation to their knees. Okay, so my Camper Crush of the week is the movie Twilight. I am 30 years old and I never saw the movie Twilight. What year did it come out? 
Um, I, I, if I had like to 2009? guess, 2010, 11, 12, I don't, I don't really think it was, year. I think it was earlier than that. Cause I was definitely in high school. All that to say, I was like the prime age for that movie and gay as hell. Just look at me. But I had never seen Twilight. So you were like, let's put it on. We did I've try been to trying to tell you for years to watch Twilight. We, we put it on one time in Tennessee, but we got distracted. Um, so we did, we put it on and for the first time I experienced Twilight. It's not really what I thought it was going to be. What did you think it was going to be? I, I don't know. So in the first one, spoiler alert, there's really not much Jacob. So I feel like I'm, I'm forced into like team Edward and I don't, yeah. I, I, I'm not, you know, maybe, you haven't been, you haven't had your new moon, your new moon cherry popped yet because I'm telling you, Jacob's going to come in fast furious hotter than ever yeah and it's conflicting so yes great point all that to say i've only seen the first movie i think maybe for the next i, I would love to like revisit this as i watch it you know yeah so I, like i would love to hear like so re rehashing this real quick you've never seen the movie i think you'd never seen it because jonathan loves to be different and loves to like not follow social trends yeah so i, I don't know how you escaped the madness that was twilight. i was working at the movie theater at this time and it was like it was all anyone could talk about i of of course I understood it and I knew I'm not I know who Izzy is and I know who is he Bella as a Bella Bella oh, Bella I know who <laughs> Bella is and I know who they I know who they are and I know people take teams you know but I just didn't understand like I didn't know what it was about yeah beyond of course that. so what are your um, thoughts like just give me some rundown you know I feel like I'm forced into being on being on team Eddie and right now I don't think that I am I feel like he he put her in a lot of danger and a lot of harm's way he tried to avoid her at all costs but she was all always trying to get back with him like and she just always it wasn't anyone's fault listen like this is this is the crux of it all he didn't ask for his life and she didn't ask to be like like engrossed in his scary vampire energy i'm throughout the entire franchise spoiler alert, i always am loyal to eddie and see I, okay that's I interesting because i don't know if i'm going to be going the same way but i don't really know anything about jakey boy's story i think we're gonna have to wait and see it is interesting but he really put her in a lot of harm's way and he's like the evil queen the evil queen i will protect you from the evil queen like don't put her in a situation that you feel like you can't get her out of the baseball scene first off loves that loving that that, that was is my super Bowl iconic scene i was loving it but then when those three evil Evil vampire, queens. the three evil queens come up and they're like, Do you want to play us in a game? Why is the doc guy? Why is or was that the doctor? The dad? Why was he like, Yeah, let's let's have a little game of scrimmage? Bitch, what? Because sometimes when you're facing your enemies, it's easier to play, it's easier to play a little bit more coy. Cause he knows they're bad, but he thinks the best. He's like, Did you catch? He's also like, Oh, a couple of us were just leaving. Like, why don't you swap in place? He's trying to give them time to leave. No, I don't he think so. He said that. He said he was like, oh, a couple of us were just leaving. Why don't you join in to get them time to go away? He's I not really their father. Oh, okay. Well, we haven't gotten there yet. Don't tell me. They oh, said, well, I do yes, know that part. Yeah, I do know that part. So uh, less from a more character storyline theme, what were some of like the general movie themes that you enjoyed? That I enjoyed? I know, well, in this movie itself, I don't know. I just think she just... What do you think about Kristen Stewart's acting? Babe, I don't even know what I liked about the movie. I liked it. It was crazy. I laughed a lot when I shouldn't have been laughing. I think that's Her, why it's so fun to rewatch it now is because the acting is just like so unhinged. Yeah. And it's so over the top. Like the looking at each other, like the brooding looking across the classroom. A lot it's of hysterical. Stare, like staring time. A lot of open mouth trout pout. Like just close your mouth. But something about it is it at baseline it is so entertaining like, I like, it is good i liked the movie couldn't tell you a single part that i actually like approve of but my question is the and music, i don't so don't answer this i don't know if if this is something that's going to be answered but some questions that i'm left with why does he sparkle my assumption is it's to deflect the sun so he doesn't um burn up like a vampire traditionally would or maybe they don't go by the normal tropes because he has he has a reflection yeah, I don't. I think they're just not going by the normal tropes okay. there. So that's one question I have. And two, what like is don't answer this. Is Bella like the chosen one? Is because why could he not read her mind? Is he like in love with her, and that's what it is? You're gonna find out some questions. of these things, but also I haven't seen the movie in over 15 years. I'm pretty sure, so I also don't remember. Maybe tonight, um, could we watch the second one? Oh my god, you don't have to twist my arm. I'll always watch it because okay. I just think it's nostalgic for me. It's like just so 
fun to watch you watch it for the first time like you've done with me like it's and it's like just a movie that everybody should see so any campers out there let us know in the comments on youtube have you seen twilight and what are you waiting for because at this point just get it together a lot of people came out of the woodwork because i was posting on my instagram story that i was watching it and so many people came out of the woodwork because i didn't check my 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 suggested messages um that were raking me across the coals. I was like, it's not that serious. I don't need like 10 people being like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Da, da, da. Yeah, Most but you were like, were you were just such a fan of Buffy and of the paranormal. So it just isn't adding up, babe, that you really skip us out. Like I, no one gets why you didn't watch it. It was unescapable. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I don't know, but, but I, I couldn't now. escape. My camper crush of the week is Twilight. So we'll stay tuned for more Twilight talk. Yeah. Twilight talk. Yeah, whether you want to hear it or not, I'm going to be speaking about it. I'm excited because you're going to open your mind to a whole new realm of TikTok and, and like, and memes that you would never truly get. Like, the, like, you, like the spider monkey bit. Like, that's just so funny when they're running up the mountain and he calls her her spidey monkey. Like, that's just... Funny. The acting is just it's it's on it's on its own level. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just it is what it is. And I love it. So what are you crushing on? I'm crushing on something I saw recently that I thought was really smart, really genius, really like solving an issue here. I was recently in a Walgreens and I was in the gift bag section, and on top of the aisles, they had bags that already had tissue paper in it that you could just purchase to then go on the road. Because one thing about me, I am going to be underprepared for a party. I'm going to be picking up the onesies and the diapers on the way to the shower. I'm going to be getting the gift card or the cash for the card on the way to the birthday party. I'm grabbing a bottle on the way for your congratulatory engagement. Mm. I do not shop ahead. I shop on the go. So Walgreens has made the solution now where you walk in and they already have gift bags of a variety of sizes already pre-stuffed with tissue paper that are empty for purchase. So you don't have to buy the bag and the big package of tissue paper and build it all in the car. You could simply just grab the bag, grab the card and go. It's already done for you. This is clearly a solution that many people have needed, including us and millions of other people. How smart. It is so smart. When we uh, when we're out at a store, what do I always end up buying? You've purchased more tissue paper than anybody <laughs> on the continental East Coast has. But you can't stop buying it, baby. The cheese does not stand alone. You're so right. This is a great solution. When we were we were with um, Aaron Gilfoy, we stopped at Target. What did she buy? Well, a sleeping mask and tissue paper. Yep. A lot of tissue paper. Everybody just needs to have tissue paper. I always had some in my trunk. I now I no longer have a trunk. I always have some handy, but it's just like, you're so right. It's once you run out of tissue paper, you're unprepared or you're like, oh shit, I'm on my way to a party and I have the gift, but I want to put it in a little bag. That's genius to have it already stuffed and already taken care of. And I love it because sometimes you buy tissue paper and there's just so much extra and it, now, now I'm being wasteful. So, so here we go. Here's the solution. Yeah. And I think it was smart. I don't know who thought of it. I think it's a great idea. Cause I never thought of that. Yeah. Why? Let's cut out the middleman. Yeah. Let's cut out the packaging. Hmm. Let's just get it all up on the shelf together. Yeah. And it's also difficult sometimes because Kira bought a giant bag and I had to help her stuff it with the tissue paper. Did You saw how big the bag was. It was like made for a TV, not for what she purchased. But that's fine. That's neither here nor there. But it's like it's sometimes hard. You're stuffing the tissue paper in. And if it's a big, deep vessel, sometimes I have this problem with wine bags. You guys, this is very interesting. Sometimes I'll stuff it down. And it'll rip. It'll rip the piece of tissue paper. I only have two left. Yeah. And then look where you are now. Look where I am now. Yeah. So guys, if you're ever on the go and you need to shop for something quick, might I suggest to Walgreens, even if you're just getting the bag there, it's a lot easier than you think it is. Get a gift card, maybe a little someone else. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're buying. Okay. I don't know you like that. Okay. But I do know that you're like me and the way that we are underprepared. We don't have the gift until we're on the way, but we never show up empty handed. And to that, my crush of the week is Walgreens marketing team in the gift wrap aisle. Congrats. <laughs> that was genius. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. Woo! These are the songs that have been stuck in our head all week. And if you'd like to listen for free, every single song we have mentioned since episode one, 
we have compiled onto a playlist to listen to for free on Spotify, as well as a YouTube playlist that is listed in the show notes. So go ahead and give it a little clickety clack and you can listen to all of the songs that we've matched yet. Yes, you can. And this week is dedicated to an artist named Beyonce. New on the scene, not sure if you guys have heard of her yet, but we just saw her tour, the Renaissance World Tour. Guys, I am the biggest Beyonce fan in the entire world. And this was my third time seeing her at Gillette. We didn't initially have tickets to the show, but about a week before her show, I got an email from Gillette and they were like, hey, do you want to come see Beyonce? And I was like, I'm going to vomit. I'm going to scream. I'm going to poop. I'm going to piss. Please let me come see. So we got to see Beyonce for free, which was really, really incredible and cool because it was a hard ticket to get and a very expensive ticket to get. Yeah, for sure. Ticket prices for these concerts has gone astronomical through the roof. And you being like a mega fan, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan, but you're like a mega, mega fan. So I feel like that's the right person to give it to. Other people, I can't say the same, but I'll keep my mouth shut about that. I'll no, keep we'll, it shut about that. We will talk about it. So we get to the we get to the uh, stadium. Um, so we didn't have we didn't have outfits, and I normally don't care what I wear to a concert. I feel like just be comfortable, whatever you want to wear. But it feels like this new age of concert going. It's like the outfit matters just as much as everything else does. Sure. And the, the so I they didn't pay me to go. It's more like a hey, but we love it if you tag us on social media and like let us know that you got your tickets from Gillette and I'm like okay like the least I can fucking do here is like just put up an Instagram carousel and just right. like thank you so much to Gillette of course I would do that absolutely this is a great gift thank but you so much but with that comes having to look slay yeah. in a slay outfit and a slay photo dump so the day before we we were slightastically like running around oh the day of statistically running around literally day of yeah at the Providence Place Mall getting stuff from Zara to look silver gold we, and silver black and white we went for the rope drop we drove to Rhode Island for the rope drop of Zara. Yeah, we watched the gates open and I said, hello, good morning, bonjour. I need to look at your mesh tops. We were already shopping before they played the music. Well, we looked great. We got to Gillette. They gave us VIP parking, which was so incredible because I've never parked at a concert venue with great parking like that. It was amazing. And they like usher us up this like crazy back elevator that felt really like luxe up to these suites. And they had this like social suite for like all these like Boston based Massachusetts based social media influencers. So it was a room full of like us and it was cool. I got to meet a bunch of people that were really sweet and really nice. Millennial Kyle, shout out. Yeah, Millennial Kyle, Kevin Cooney, like these people like I followed for a very long time, known about for a very long time I got to meet and we got to watch the show. Um, And the show was just, it was amazing. It was, it was great, was, stunning, fantastic. It have been done. I will say there was a couple people in the group and I'm not going to name names here who definitely were not fans of her but are fans of going to anything that they get to do for free which I'm really anti against you will never catch me at an event or a thing that I feel like I don't care about or I don't belong if I went it's because I wanted to be there especially if that seat could have been filled by somebody who like was a fan yeah or someone that was another smaller influencer who actually like cares about Beyonce because I think a lot of the problems with influencers nowadays that people will go to an opening of a fucking envelope if it means they can get a picture and to brag on social media like yeah I got and they Gillette also invited me to go to Luke Combs I said no. What the fuck do I care about Luke Combs? It's just not my thing. Beyonce's my thing. That being said, I was one of the few who stood up the entire time, screamed my head off. I was probably the one who knew the most renaissance out of the entire room. You and I were the only ones who were not in our seats. Everybody was like sitting down in the thing and we were standing up behind. I know. <laughs> and it was this beautiful suite. They had free beer, free wine. They had steak. They had hot dogs. Lovely. It was lovely. And I was very honored to be there. I just think some people shouldn't go unless you're an actual fan. Like, I'm not going to get flack for saying that. I think anyone listening to this would understand, like, why are you giving free tickets to people who don't care about Beyonce? Why are people showing up if they don't care about Beyonce? Scrolling on Reddit during inappropriate songs that I, or, I, we were screaming. Or scrolling on like the set list the entire time to see how much longer she has to go. It's like, why are you not just enjoying it? At one point, like, so our like suite didn't have like mixed drinks. It only had beer and wine. I was like, okay, I'm sick of Bud Light. I really need to go get like, I needed to get like a mule or something. So we went down to like the club level, which is like more, it's like the general public over there and stuff like that. And I'm, and I'm in line at the bar getting a drink. And these three girls are running from their seats as fast as they can, dripping sweat out of breath, just trying to get shots of tequila as fast as they can to get back to their seats. I'm like, this is the energy I crave. I want to be 
with people who want to be here because that was the only thing I thought was missing from the concert. Like it was so nice to be in a suite. Obviously, like I didn't pay for the tickets. I'm not going to bitch about this, but I will say there's like an allure of being around people who want to be there. It was the energy that we were missing yeah. from going down. Yeah, and it's and I've seen Beyonce twice before, like years ago, and I paid for those tickets. And when you pay for a ticket, you're going to show up and you're going to be excited to be there. When people yeah. aren't paying for a ticket, they don't care. They're going to sit and just kind of like pout, and it's like weird to me. It, it is, weird. especially yeah. I just want to you know I feel like you've already reiterated it, but I just we're not complaining about we know we're privileged and it was like an honor to go and I'm to complaining be able about to them I'm complaining about the people right. who like fucking I, show up that didn't that's, care that's just what I wanted to clarify because I feel like taken out of context like it can sound bad but I, I completely agree I'm, no, in whole I'm honored to be there I want to be in a room with people who are also deserving to be there yeah. you know what I mean who I agree. care about being there I agree so the show was absolutely amazing Blue Ivy showed up I screamed my hat off I couldn't believe I was in the presence of the younger class of royalty Beyonce just put on a show she had multiple costume changes this set list was stupid amazing and I like lost my voice on the way home. It was crazy. I know. What was your favorite song from this album? Probably. Well, I have a couple, but I didn't want to pick a song that was like everybody's already heard before. So I picked Virgo's Groove. Ooh, good choice, baby. Uh, baby, you can hit this. Don't be scared. Baby, you can hit this. Don't be scared. It's only gonna get you high. Such a good song. When she's in the little clamshell. Baby, come over. Over. I so love good. that song. It took like 12 people to write it. I did briefly look it up. I was like, is there anything fun and interesting about this song? Uh, it's a great song. Really nothing on it. But I did find out that it took like 13 people to write, which I, is fun. I love that kind of like, I don't know, funky like vibe of that song. It's very summer. It's it's like a slower song, but it is like a funky fun song. It's just funky. Uh, so Renaissance is a really great album, but it came out last year and it was kind of the album that I moved into New York listening to. Yeah. Beyonce, it was right when we right when the ship landed. Yeah, and like my favorite Beyonce album will always be Beyonce Beyonce, like self-entitled album, self-titled album. But that one was really important to me at a certain point in my life. I feel like she's always been there for my milestones. Yeah. I love this album. So what uh what song are you picking for your camp song? Oh, it was a really hard choice because I was screaming the entire time, but my favorite Beyonce song off renaissance it has to be cozy you guys we're going to add it to the playlist as well as summer um virgo's groove but cozy is just a self-love anthem that i don't know it'll transcend time for me it really is just so incredible i love that every time i see buffy in her little uh, her little tower and she's laying on the top i said comfortable in her skin yeah comfortable in my skin cozy with who i am i love myself goddamn cozy Cozy. It's just a really great song. It, and it's really funny. I, I didn't even catch this part that's about Solange. And it obviously is when she goes, she's a god. She's a hero. She survived all she's been through. Confident. Damn, she's lethal. Might I suggest you don't fuck with my sis? Because she's comfortable. Because mm -hmm. for me, when I say sis, I really just mean like anyone who I'm friends with. Like that's sis. That's my sis. You know what I mean? But I think in this instance, she's really like talking about Solange here. Well, I think you can take it either way. And I exactly. think that's what's beautiful about it. Well, that's what works for Beyonce. She's talking probably about Solange here because it's something, yeah. Because Solange is lethal. Talk about the elevator. Yeah, when you put her in an elevator, she's going to be lethal Talk about, about the it. elevator. Um, but one more thing I think is really great about this um, song is that there's a really huge nod for the whole album towards the queer community. Like, the entire album is dedicated to her uncle Johnny, who's technically her cousin, but was, like, her early, like, champion of her, like, solo career for, like, Destiny's Child. Yeah. She was a cost he was a costume designer for that. And he oh, unfortunately, didn't know that. Yeah, like, Uncle Johnny may mind just that cheap spandex. She looks a mess. Like, he was designing all of, like, their costumes costuming for like their early years and he did die um from like aids complications um. so she wrote this like beautiful thing about it can i read it to you yeah please um a big thank you to my uncle johnny he was my godmother and the person to expose me to a lot of music and culture that serves as an inspiration for this album thank you to all the pioneers who originated culture to all the fallen angels whose contributions have gone unrecognized for far too long this is a celebration for you oh. it just it's all about it's all about like queer love Look and at queer my expression i know goosebumps because it felt like a real thank you to the to the queer community this whole entire album bit yeah. and cozy there's a whole breakdown of different colors and it's the it's like the modern like gay flag when she does all those colors in yeah it. like it's just it's beautiful mm -hmm. and i love cozy and i love beyonce thank you gillette for sending me out there that was amazing um and guys just support beyonce i always will yeah always will always have so the songs are on the playlist that are linked in the episode description i think 
that's all we have for today's yeah, episode. Yeah, that's all we got for today's episode, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want some bonus content, again, our trip that we had, uh, I, we did four vlogs. There's like hours of content on there. You can go to patreon.com slash camp counselors. And it's not just the content that we're going to put out. You can get the content that we've already put out there. Um, and it's affordable and it's great. You know, I love it. Yeah. And if you haven't already, please rate us five stars. Please share us with someone that you love. We love you so much. Thanks for being here. And with that being said, lights out campers. campers.